Hello everyone. Today I want to um just give you food for thought, you know? From a biblical sense and life in general cuz you know the Bible says that let the earthly things teach you over heavenly, you know? Like because if you can't understand the things that are happening right before us right now it will be very impossible to understand the heavenly you know the heavenly things we always have to pick a leaf from the earthly stuff that happens here you know the situations uh, examples and lessons and everything we have to learn from that so it was today i was thinking about this thing about friendship, you know, and human character. And it took me back to to high school. Uh, in in the final two in the in the last two years of high school, uh, I had a friend. In I in high school I was I, I, I was evil. I was, I was a very stubborn child, you know. I was very wicked. I mean, I did. I did everything wicked, you know. <laughs> that. I see what high school kids do today, and it's it's nothing compared to what I used to do in high school. And I I I, I gravely repent of that, you know. But again, I thank God that I went through it. That He didn't give me up and got destroyed in that. But even in that life, when you're evil and all that, the people you consider friends, you know, because you you you're of like mind, you 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 know. So I had this one friend. We connected. My connection with him it was normal. You know, I went to high school. I remember. I went to high school. I always went to uh, private schools all my life. So I reached this high school. Remember, my mom had, had she was going through a lot. That's she even had no money then. You no, know, even struggled food. Everything was tough. So I got to high school and my mom had just gotten the money. I remember I went back to school. I, I, I had started started that that term, or some of you call it, call it semesters. In my country, call it a term. So we had started that term. I was two weeks late because my mom had no money. But anyway, she got money and she sent me to school. Now, I go to school with with nothing, and that had never happened to me all my life. This was the first time I went to school without, you know, rations, without pocket money, anything. And I had seen the situation at home, and I was like, oh, okay. So I went to school, got this friend. My mom had left me money for, for, for a school uniform, you know. And I hadn't paid for the school uniform yet, you know. So was where, oh, other kids were wearing school uniform and, you know, I was wearing, I was, I was the black sheep, you know, I was the outstanding one. But it's the funny thing that I met a guy there who asked me, hey, uh, how are you? became friends and he got me a uniform the following day you know I was like have you paid for your uniform I was like not yet I paid for my uniform but it came like a week or two after and this guy got, got me a uniform a new uniform I had a new uniform so he gave me a, a uniform I was like hey I have a new uniform and you can have that he gave me a shirt and pants he was really nice to me you know we connected like we 
We both had a thing of lust. We really loved girls, I'm telling you. He was a player, I was a player. We, we, we liked that life, I'm telling you. And the thing he does is that... Uh, sorry about that. The thing he did was... I mean, he had his own interests. He loved he loved the things I loved. He loved entertainment, but you know, no one is perfect. He had his weaknesses. I had my weaknesses, but we connected. We were okay. I mean, he, he fed me. I remember when he went for break, he could buy me something to eat, and I had no money. You know, that guy was good to me. So, anyways, we maintain the friendship. We go on. We go on these different missions together. He was he was a prefect. And he was really a nice guy, in my opinion. I mean, for for back in the day, I mean, because he, he was good to me, you know. <laughs> that that's that's how we are human beings. If someone is good to you, you like he's a nice guy. But to me, I never really looked at his weaknesses to judge him of that, you know. I really looked at, oh, let's go do this. We meet up, we go do it. Oh, help me with this. I help him. He helps me. Something like that. I remember when the situation went okay at home and my mom said started giving me money I said you know because I went, we, life went back to normal you know god blessed us and everything went back to normal he was still my friend so that whole first year so now it goes to the last year of high school the last year of high school you know they brought in new kids you know And these new kids are class below us. They come from all different schools and stuff. And sometimes I would go to their, to their dormitories, you know. I, I never really used to go to people's dormitories. I mean, people used to come to our room, you know, because we had these rooms where we used to sleep two, two people and, you know, we used to share two people, a room. There weren't many in that school, you know. It, it was an expensive school, so not everyone would go there. So. When we got to, to when these kids came, I mean, I had a thing where I could read people's character. I mean, I look at a person and read this guy's character. You speak, and I'm like, oh, he's, he's this kind of person. So I described every each and every one when I just come to the school anyways. So everyone kind of found me interesting, I think. And everyone was a friend. I mean, to me, everyone is a friend. I speak to everyone, you know. Everyone is a brother, but not a friend. Everyone is a brother to me. I take everyone as my brother. But a friend, a friend is someone you choose. And I had chosen that guy to be my friend. So what happens is that this, this new grade of people comes into school and they start interacting with us, they come from all their different schools, you know, they tell us stories from their different schools, new characters. You know, school is kind of interesting. And I remember I had a cousin that came in from the UK that studied with us. I mean, I was the only person, you know, like relative in that age group. So they brought him to my school so that, you know, keep an eye on him, you know. You know so that he goes to a school where he can cope, where he knows someone. So he came to my school and... <clears throat> My cousin was one of the people. I mean, he didn't. He, he, he that guy was so cool. That dude was so cool that he taught me a lot. Sorry about that. That dude was so cool that he taught me a lot. He was never one to judge people. He was never one to uh, sit down, sit down and judge someone. That hey. So and so does this or that. But there came all these other hypocrites that came in. And they're so judgmental. Because I remember my cousin called that friend of mine. He gave him a nickname, Griffin. Because he looked like Eddie Griffin. You know? And it's until my cousin said that, oh, this dude looks like Eddie Griffin. I was like, hmm. Yeah, he kind of looks like Eddie Griffin. So. Yeah, he smiled like Eddie Griffin and yeah I know he's so we, we, we named him Griffin so but the thing is Griffin Griffin was a cool guy in my opinion but when this new school of guys came in they started seeing the ugly stuff about Griffin that hey Griffin he's a player he's funny he's this and that I'm telling you I've never seen all these things about Griffin 
But when these people spoke, I started seeing these things. And it's like I was more drawn to these people, to this group of kids. And I separated from Griffin slowly. So I seen Griffin acting strange and all that. And we eventually fell apart, you know. Even when we left high school, we, ne we never really met. Even after we left high school, Griffin became a DJ. Life moved on, you know. And he's doing okay. I've met him in town before, you know. Back at home, I've met him in town. Uh, about two, three times, you know. It's been a long time anyways. But the thing is, Griffin was nice to me. And I think it was my mistake that I did that. The moral of the story is, when you listen to negative stuff, you will start seeing it. There's living in denial, that's one thing. But if you listen to certain things, if you, if you fall in the company of certain people, you will change. I had never seen anything about Griffin, I mean, even complaining about his way of life. Because me and him were close, I mean, we used to talk, we used to be like, man, I struggle with this, and we used to talk. But when these other, when these, uh, when these other parties came into that relationship, that friendship, I'm telling you, we, we just moved on, I mean, we, we transcended. Griffin went his way, I went my way, you know. And for some time I was like, people always used to ask me, you know, even after high school, they used to be like, oh, so and so, Griffin was your friend, was your cool buddy. How is he? And I can't tell them anything. I'm like, I haven't seen Griffin since high school. But the thing is, it runs me back to a scripture in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, it says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. In this case, I wasn't good. But there was evil communication. And that evil communication killed a relationship. And I'm like, how many relationships out there, how many friendships, how many things have gotten broken down because of evil communication or bad company, you know? And when they say that bad company corrupts good morals, I mean, you find someone has no problem living in a certain community. It's like, me, I'm this kind of person that I do not care how someone lives their life, you know? I mean, as long as we have no issues, we, we are at peace. I mean, you find people who are homophobic, you find people who are, they don't like gay people, they don't like this, they don't like that. And I'm like, if that person is not hurting you, they're not doing anything to you, why do you go and attack them? You know? Let there be peace, because Christ said, live at peace with everyone. If possible, live at peace with everyone if it's possible. And I go back to the scripture that says that, you know, the parable of the tears where Christ says that, let them live together. Let them grow together. And I will, when it comes to the time of harvest, we will gather the wheat first and then we, we, we throw the tears in, into the fire. So that gets me to a place of like, why, why, why do we judge, you know? Because your neighbor is a certain way, because your neighbor lives a certain way, because your neighbor does this and that, you, you do not know. And the thing is about evil communication, that people see other people's wrongs. This is something I have learned that people have struggles, like demons. Everything is demonic, believe it or not. Everything is demonic. Anger. You know, short temperedness, I mean, unclean thoughts, everything. This is like spirits, spirits, spirits disturbing people. And these spirits are conjured up by so many different things. 
and if you have a connection with someone that is good that someone doesn't someone hasn't hurt you someone hasn't wronged you someone hasn't maintain it because here's the thing if i was with griffin now or some some one someone might say that hey you separated because of a reason maybe god separated you people but the thing is and a good thing we never separated in in bad terms or anything it was just a drift you know it was a shift but the shift was on my side and i look back and i'm like hey what if we had stayed friends me and griffin and he had, and he has seen my transformation you know like hands on he has seen my transformation from where i was to now he would be encouraged to know to know god more you know because he knows he knew god but he had his struggles that guy even knew god i didn't know god then he came from a christian family they pray they do what but the thing is if he had seen my transformation before him i think it could have done something to him it could have encouraged him with something but i lost such a, a friendship because i listened to people i have learned in life never to listen you can take a warning from someone someone tells that oh this person is creepy does this and that but you being around them and i've met people who are like that they see evil in everything in everyone they meet like everyone they meet they just see evil in them have you ever realized uh you have someone in your life you, i mean you just you meet up you talk you share about life you edify them sometimes they edify you and then someone comes and they're like this person has this this person does this this person someone completely new someone different comes in the circles and it's like they have a destructive spirit they have this destructive demeanor ab about them you know like everywhere they go they just see evil and they push it I look out for such people. I think in today's language they call them toxic people. They find people are vibing and then you start you know you're judgmental you're doing this and that. But the thing is it's not that people people's sins or mistakes or weaknesses shouldn't be worked upon but if it's through rumor mongering or gossip then that is sinful that is evil and that is what i have seen that is what i have seen for the most part and it is sad that it's everywhere it has no boundaries and the the, the worst people i've seen that do it it's even it's so sad that people who say love god do it a lot now In my observation when I was living in the world I met all sorts of characters I met all sorts of people in the world but those people they were wrong in so many ways that they struggled they talked about issues of life and I became a born again when I became a Christian I went to church I honestly found that people who claim to love God were living even worse than than the place I was. Because you see there's a thing about hypocrisy. That when you claim that you're this but you live otherwise and you're you you you're so judgmental. I'm telling you sometimes I've experienced this in church so much. so 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 much that you meet people in church people who say that they love god i would say church because it's where i've met these people 
because they have a common understanding that they love God, they do what. But now I realize that they are the same people who go back to the world, you know. But the thing is, these people profess Christ. They boast about him. They even preach him. But the thing they do is, they judge. And they're more evil, they're more wicked than people of the world. Because you see, when someone tells you that they love God, you're going to see them in a different light. I was so trusting when I, when I just become a Christian. I was so I was so naive. I was so trusting. Like any, if anyone just told me that, oh, I'm a Christian, my jaws would just drop, and I'm like, ha, ha. yeah, I would just I just drool like a dog, just waiting to, you know, to interact with this brother or sister. And I'm telling you, I go to church and I find these things that Christians do. They can invite you to their place. That hey, oh, I have a tea party my place you go to a tea party and a tea party conversation totally changes that oh we're just chilling we're just chilling i mean this kind of pretense and i remember one time there's this one person that was a lady one time she invited me to her place <laughs> Oh, me, 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 I came to church, I was a player, I was a player, I, I, I used to, I was a savage when it came to the females, but I saw this female inviting me to her place, and I told her, come on, come on, sister, you know, <laughs> me, at your place, what are we going to do? Because I asked her bluntly, that, hey, come to your place, what, what am I going to do? She's like, go take tea, and watch TV, and then talk, I'm like, really? Me? Sit down with you? TV and what? <laughs> you know, it's, it's like it's like a mouse playing with a lion, uh, or a lion playing with a mouse. It's, it's eventually going to, to, you know, to bite it. <laughs> the things I've found in church, man, it is, it's it's funny but it's sad guys it's funny but it's sad i mean the things i think about i'm like oh god oh god i don't, I don't think we're this naive i mean <sighs> and then there's this one fellowship i used to go to most of the people there were girls so one time they asked me hey mark do you have a girlfriend because when i became a christian i didn't have a girlfriend i cut out that life you know because what's the point of a girlfriend if, if I'm not intimate with you? That's the whole point of getting you, you know? I have to be intimate with you. And after I became a Christian, you know, God was teaching me about all this stuff. You have to keep yourself pure. You have to stay away from fornication. You have to stay away from all this. And here came one time a, ba a band of girls grabbed me one time after fellowship and I'm like, hey! Do you have a girlfriend? I was like, no. They're like, why? And I told them, I do not want to pretend to be what I'm not. And I told them that if I have a girlfriend, I'll have to be intimate with her. And being intimate with her right now will mean I'm sinning. And they told me, you can't control yourself, you can't do this. And I told them, I know you say you can control yourself, but this is me. I cannot have a girlfriend and I'm not intimate with her. I will be deceiving myself because I know my integrity. I know where, where I cross and where I do not. And the whole time, you know, when I became born again, I never got a girlfriend. I never. I never got a girlfriend. Because I was trying, I was trying, you know, to keep, to keep myself away from that life. But you see, the thing is, we are so daring, we are so daring when it comes to God. Like, we want to live, we want to please the flesh, but again, we also want to live with God. And that's not how it works, you, you have to choose one. You know, the things I really see in this life, there's, um, 
the thing is me i don't really care for alcohol you know i have no problem with drink with with someone who drinks i would interact with you but again i won't judge you and even when i just become a christian i stopped drinking i stopped alcohol um i stopped anything alcohol and i stopped um smoking and all that because and it took me a while because you see i always ask god how does this affect me you know and i'm going to share about that the thing is drinking alcohol is not is not a sin as so many christians have have made it but here's a thing i want to share a scripture from the psalm Ah, sorry, from Proverbs. Proverbs has uh, Proverbs fourteen, verse twelve says, "There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death." There's also Proverbs sixteen twenty five, "There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death." Let me tell you something. To drink alcohol is not a sin. It's not something that will take you to hell. Like, oh, you go to hell because you you drank alcohol. Oh, you go to hell because you smoked a cigarette. But here's the thing. thing that is happening right now is this the one person will come to you and tell you that hey I drink alcohol but I have no problem with it because I know I contain my drink no I contain my drink I control my drink I do this I'm good I'm good And some people will, will tell you all this stuff and they're like, oh, I'm not a social drinker, I'm this and that, you know. And you see, you can't argue with people when they tell you things like that. But the thing is, at some point, that drink is going to destroy the man some point it doesn't matter if it's 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or even a few months but the end of that road is destruction here's a thing about alcohol alcohol controls you it is not a sin to drink it but here's the, the, the real the big reality of it Alcohol will control you. The excitement it brings. You will miss that excitement when when you are down because it brings instant excitement. The same excitement can be brought by God, by the Holy Spirit. But someone, you, I want you to look at people, all people who drink. Everyone who, who's a drinker. They are loose in some way. They, they they have lost their moral compass. They well they they slow they are slowly derailed. They slowly derail. Slowly by slowly they derail. Because you see the thing is, mostly for social drinkers. When you are a social drinker, you're gonna meet people. You're going to meet characters out there. People that you drink with, you share with. They'll give you ideas, and not alcohol. I'm telling you, you're gonna get ideas. And the other thing is, it's been proven that alcohol is dangerous to your health. 
excessive alcohol someone will say that i do not take excessive alcohol i drink a bottle a week that is impossible to drink a bottle a week but anyways let's say you drink a bottle a week you are going to need more drink let's play the kind let's say you are you're the kind that drinks when you're gaming when you're playing your video games when you're watching a movie or something the thing is it will become a habit and a habit and a habit and eventually it should take over you the other thing about smoking is the same And you see the thing is evident with someone who smokes and someone who drinks. When someone drinks and they start losing, they start derailing, they start losing their more their, their, their motor skills. They you see people start talking like this, like in the natural sense. You see people start talking like disconnected stuff. They start talking like well yeah I I I I know but that's, 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 that's a way, you know something that's not normal and sometimes when you're speaking to someone so i won't say all people who drink alcohol are demon possessed i don't know about that but i know that someone who can't draw, control their drink their drinking is demon possessed because sometimes you can speak to someone who's an alcoholic and i've spoken to people who are al alcoholics before and I could see that the man is out of the body and I'm speaking to a demon like you see someone saying <laughs> and you're like what I mean have you ever gotten chills when when reality hits you and you get chills on your body I've spoken to some people and that happened to me I'm like Phew. I'm speaking to a demon I don't know if anyone can understand this Drinking alcohol will not take you to hell. I'll tell you that. But the things you, the things, are you gonna be strong enough that the alcohol will not control you? Because you can go to a bar and see and find some fairly unattractive ladies there, and you drink the first drink. You drink the second, you drink the third, you drink the fourth, and you look across, and those ladies will start looking like Beyonce, Rihanna, and Jennifer Lopez. Now the alcohol has started controlling you. How are you gonna convince me? Okay, let's leave me. How are you gonna convince the Holy Spirit or God? that you got this see that you're living in a lie because it seems good you know in the beginning and you see that thing about drinking you meet you meet her up at the bar it's been a while you haven't seen yourselves as guys as, as dudes you know friends anywhere for a while then you all meet up time flies so fast with one drink you, you drink the music you know people are talking and you're reminiscing and all this the next thing then whoa gone there's so many ways we can meet up and and interact you know there's so many things we can do someone can can do a barbecue you know can do a barbecue you can invite a family to your house so they can invite you or something like that you have a meal you know i don't know if you're really pro pro alcohol you maybe 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 you can meet at the house maybe you know and i don't know but in my opinion it's not something i would advise now me being a christian i'm, I'm the kind of christian who was i would say libro that i thought there's no they I, I had this open mind that there's no harm in alcohol you know you can go drink here go drink there i'm telling you i was drinking even when i was a christian but not that occasional drinker i a friend invites you that I would never spend my money on alcohol like go and spend like usually if I had a friend that's depressed or something 
and I know their kind of thing. They come visit me or something. I'll take them to a nearby bar and then we go. We go to a bar and, you know, drink one, two, three. And talk about life. We encourage each other. There is one particular friend of mine I used to drink out with or, and cousins, you know. Because that's when we used to meet life. Because that's, that's what used to grab them, you know. You don't go to grab them on a meal or something. You had to get drinks, you know. I was that kind of person. But the thing is, I was going against my integrity. Even if I was encouraging them, even if I was preaching God to them. I'm telling you, me, I used to go to the bar and drink and, and preach the word of God there. But let me tell you something. You will be caught up. Sooner or later, you will be caught up. And the thing is, some of these people will take it so okay that, oh, I can be a Christian and drink, you know? Which you could be a Christian and have some drink. But the thing is, it is better to live without it. Because, see some of these drinks, they are dedicated, you know? They are dedicated when, when they brew them or when they distill them. When they distill these drinks, you know, like the spirits, the moonshine, all that stuff. And like in my country, there's moonshine. It's, it's super strong, man. And people drink it there like water. But the thing is, some of these companies, I won't say all, but some of these companies, they dedicate these drinks, like after distilling or brewing it up, they, they all make a circle and then they speak things against them that we want people to be poor, we want people to buy this product, we want people to fight, we want violence. They, they conjure up spirits in these drinks. Now these are the, 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 the companies that are from the underworld. And these are big companies. These are big companies that do this. They want people to get um, high blood pressure. They want people to get heart burns. They want people to do... They call upon all these spirits. Poverty and all that. Luck. And curses. They cast these drinks. And they market them so nice on the TV. And I'm like, wow, that looks nice. When you taste it, it tastes like trash. I'll give you an example of... Um, Smoking, you know, smoking. Look at all the Rastafar Rastafarians. They're so positive. They come and they're like, no, 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 no. That's a, that, 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 that a jar thing. That, that, you know, you know, you speak to, to a Rasta and he's like, nah, 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 nah. Life be simple, you know. And you see a guy who's being positive, but he looks like he's homeless, you know. He looks like... He looks derailed. Doesn't look like someone you can really get advice from. I look at all these Jamaican artists. Some sometimes you can hear them speaking, uh, singing about. Ja, you see, you, they speak up. They, they sing about Ja. You're like maybe this Ja is a good god, but Ja encourages uh, smoking marijuana. You know. And the guy, they tell you that the guy is a, a, a millionaire or a billionaire, but the guy looks finished. You find a guy is worth a hundred million, you know. Worth a hundred million dollars, you know. A Jamaican artist. But the guy looks finished. He looks malnourished. He looks, looks like he had his last meal the previous year, I'm telling you. They all look, they look finished. That's one thing, you know. I wish I had a picture of when I used to still smoke, you know, when I when I still smoked cigarettes and you know, tobacco and and marijuana. I wish I wish I had a picture of that. You 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 would look at that picture and laugh. Times I used to find my mom crying and she's like, oh my god, oh my god. I'm like, I'm like mom, why are you crying? And she's like, look at how you look. Look at what you've done to yourself. Look at, you know, right now my my mom is proud of me you know he's proud of me I don't look I don't look finished anymore I just look finished and gone man this life is so funny guys it's, it's we live in denial so much and the thing is The 
the thing is that people always we want to live in this denial but uh, I think let me read let me read you a proverb I think it's a uh, 31st proverb go to the book of proverbs and you go to proverbs yeah it's, it's the last proverb actually it's um proverbs 31 let me read it from verse 1 the words of king lemuel the prophecy that his mother told him what my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, all Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes to, nor for princes, strong drink. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. So this shows you that if you really study this scripture, you will know that drinking alcohol is not bad, but it takes you to a certain place and it is associated with a certain group of people. We see that King Lemuel's mom associates alcohol here with those that are afflicted those that have burdens, those that want to forget their problems. But those who want to rule, those who want to be in charge, those who want to be strong, alcohol shouldn't be for them. And this is the thing you should pick. If you want to be strong, do not drink, do not use drugs, do not use any of that stuff. You know, but if you want to lose, if you want to be the afflicted one, if you want to be that person that has all that wrong stuff going on in their life, drink. Because drink will bring poverty upon you, whether you like it or not. That's the spirit behind it. Alcohol has poverty, misery, destruction. That is what will happen to you. And I pray that this video helps and blesses you. Amen.